You are Locked On Patriots, your daily New England Patriots podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello to all of you, Foxborough faithful, and thank you once again for making Locked On Patriots a daily part of your New England Patriots coverage. Remember, folks, make sure you get Locked On Patriots wherever you get your podcasts to get the latest episode as soon as it's available. I'm your host, Mike DeBate. I cover your New England Patriots for Patriots Country of Sports Illustrated. So reach out to me and let me know what's on your mind on Twitter, on the Bird app, on X, whatever you happen to be calling it these days, at M-D-A-B-A-T-E-N-F-L. While you're out there showing some love to Locked On Patriots, please follow our account there as well at LO underscore Patriots. That's fans. Today's episode brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more right now. New customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 if your team wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started. Pats fans, it's always fun, and yesterday was so nice, we decided to do it twice. We welcome back the legendary Green King of Sting himself, Thomas Murphy of E2G Sports. Murph, thank you so much for coming back today and for joining me today. Back-to-back days, Don Murph. My my pleasure, man, my pleasure. Who canceled? (laughs) Never mind. That chair that Murph sits in each and every day he comes on to Locked On Patriots, folks, embroidered and the embroidery is first class Merv. it is first class embroidery it's a comfortable chair we definitely are glad well then we're not going to go there there's a family show but i mean what bottom line murph we are glad to have you on the show each and every time you grace our airwaves and you know there was just there was so much that we wanted to talk about on monday's show whether it be the Patriots poor showing, or some silver linings that came from that game as well. We wanted to talk about Bill Belichick and the rumors swirling around and surrounding him. We just didn't get a chance to get to all of it. And that is why we are welcoming back the legendary Connor Murphy Fisto today. And we've got a lot to talk about, Murph. And, you know, the stories of the day continue to be the Patriots lost to the Commanders. I know there's a lot of window dressing stories out there right now, folks, that are making the rounds. And yeah, I mean, Murph and I are definitely going to give you our take on those. But one of the big stories that came out of this matchup that we didn't talk about here on Monday's pod was the absence of two main ingredients in that defensive backfield for your New England Patriots for a significant portion of the early part of that game, one of which actually sat out the entire first quarter. Yeah, folks, I'm talking about cornerbacks J.C. Jackson and Jack Jones. Now, there's never a dull moment in Foxborough, Murph. This secondary is already decimated by injury. Christian Gonzalez, Marcus Jones, season-ending IR, we're not seeing them until 2024. Nope. Jonathan Jones has been banged up, whether it be knee, ankle injuries. This guy is trying to play through so much right now, and he's doing an amazing job, really. I think, you know, gave his best effort on Sunday, but you can clearly see that he's hampered by uh, by these injuries. Logic would tell you that the Patriots need as many bodies in that defensive backfield against a talented core of receivers from the commanders. I mm-hmm. know their record three and five coming in was not something that was striking fear into the hearts of a lot of Patriots fans, but you're talking Jahan Dotson, you're talking Terry McLaurin. These yeah. guys can get out there and they can play. A little surprised to see JC Jackson sit out the first couple of series and Jack Jones for the entirety of the first quarter. Right. Murph, what was your reaction when you saw these guys on the bench as it was going down? Well, as it was going down, and I was screaming at the the Twitterverse, you know, <laughs> where the hell is Jack Jack? My man, Jack Jack. Mm-hmm. I love Jack Jones. This is one of my favorite uh, draft picks of the last five years is Jack Jones being on this team. And I wanted to know where the hell he was. Um, JC Jackson missed the first two series and then was in there. I actually missed the fact that he missed the first two series. But Jeff Howe uh, tweeted out mm. um, after the game yesterday that uh, it wasn't disciplinary, but it was it was for poor play. Mm. Uh, maybe their head's not being in the game. Um, I'm, I'm not going to speak for Jeff Howe. Uh, by all means, folks, go check him out on Twitter. Or at the athletic and and see exactly what he said, but um, 
no, it was surprising. It was shocking, especially with some of the defense, uh, the, the groupings that were being put out there during the first quarter. And um, there was cover zero out there. If, mm-hmm. if you're going to run cover zero, you need to have guys in the back end that are going to be able to cover right. and, uh, and, and allow the, um, the, the, the defense time to get to um, get to the quarterback. And, and that didn't happen because mm-hmm. the, the, what was happening up front while we, we praise guys like Christian Barmore, who had a fantastic game on mm-hmm. Sunday, Absolutely folks, did. If, if you're going to go cover zero, you've got to get home. You've got mm-hmm. to get home every single time, especially with one, one with a single high safety. And uh, when that single high safety is Marty Mapo, you had better get home. Yeah. Without question. I'm glad you brought up Mapo because I got a funny feeling we're going to talk about him a little bit later on today in our show. But bottom line, Jeff's report is absolutely, I think, one of the ones that we're hanging our hat on right now. Um, I always have the utmost faith and the utmost uh, Mm. respect for Jeff's reporting. He's always going to tell you folks what's right, what's wrong, and he's going to do it objectively and without an agenda being driven. So if it comes from Jeff, you can pretty much take it to the bank. That's the way Murph and I are taking it. it out. And it really did, I think, stand into line with what Bill Belichick said after the game. And even Mike Pellegrino, when we had a chance to talk to him on Tuesday morning when he met with reporters by uh, video conference, he said, look, you're going to have to ask Jack about the situation. You're going to have to ask those guys. But bottom line, you know, we played everyone in the game. Right. So it wasn't a situation where – these guys were deliberately being forced out of the game. Uh, we've seen things like this happen before, Murph. And I think I might be setting the table for Murph to say something in just a moment, but I'm not going to steal his thunder, folks. I'm going to give him the chance to make the point. Bottom line, if you're looking at recent performance issues, which is the heart of what Jeff's report said, there's a case to be made. JC yep. gave up five catches for 94 yards and a pair of touchdowns against the Miami Dolphins. That's not going to be acceptable. No. And he, I'm sorry, J.C. Jackson coming back into the Patriots, um, you know, J.C. Jackson being welcomed back into the Patriots locker room. Yes, he did spend some time away from here last year, yep. but he knows that system. He's that's going to be it. held to a different standard, whether he likes it or whether he doesn't. And that's no knock on J.C. I still think he's one of the best ball hawking corners in the league when he's dialed in. But unfortunately, folks, even the best sometimes have difficulties and I think the Patriots went with that in that situation. Um, you know, Jack Jones responsible for a 31-yard touchdown in the, uh, the Dolphins' loss as well. So you look at these guys and you look at their recent performance, yeah, you can understand why they might have been held out. You can also understand why they might have been upset after the game. JC walked through the locker room, says, I'm not talking, and that was pretty much it. Jack Jones had already left the building by the time the reporters on scene got down he, into the locker room. He didn't room. even shower. And started to talk to uh, you know members of the media that were there. Jack was already gone a few moments later. He's posting on Instagram and singing in his car, <laughs> leaving Gillette Stadium. So, yeah, I think there probably were some hurt feelings. Some dander was definitely kicked up. With, you know, I guess the argument right now is: Do you agree with this type of punitive action, whether it be disciplinary, whether it be performance related? When the Patriots are trying to do all they can, can they afford? to do something like this to two of their best defensive players. Was it the right no. call? No. Bill Bill is 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 writing uh checks that that his defensive backs can't cash. That's that's why JC was brought back in here. Um that's why uh Jack Jack was drafted in the first place. And and quite frankly, I, I'm I'm finding it hard to believe that that it was it was warranted knowing both of these guys. But having said that all right. This isn't the first bad day that, as you said before, you know, that JC has had since coming back. Now, I don't know if it's still injury related. I don't think it is because I see him out there running and he looks fine. Mm. Um, but it, it's one thing to give up these kind of plays. And he's done this throughout his career. All right. But he always had that backed up by I'm Mr. INT. It, it's one thing when you're doing things like that and still giving up. A, a long pass or, or two or three and you have other people on the other side of the ball that are that are making up for your mistakes um this team is is not doing that mm. all right this team is not turning the ball over in the way that they have in the past jc jackson is one of those guys that is definitely not turning the ball over um 
in the way that he has in the past. And uh, while while there was a, you know, the Patriots for all intents and purposes did win the turnover battle yesterday. Uh, I mean, on Sunday, it, it, it didn't translate to a W and, and that's, that's not just new England, man. That's happening all over the league. Mm-hmm. Um, you, you see teams like Kansas city losing the turnover battle and still, uh, coming out with victories. The Patriots aren't Kansas city. They, they, mm-hmm. they can't depend on this offense to go out there right. and do those things and, co- and cover up for those mistakes right now. The Patriots need to turn the ball over and they need to do it now. Yeah, they absolutely do. And you're not going to do that with two of your best ball hawking nose for the ball corners right. on the bench. And to Bill Belichick's credit, he did say we played everybody. Pellegrino again reiterated that. I don't want to hear that. Uh, yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. I mean, you know, it, there's there are arguments to be made. I mean, J.C. Jackson finished the game with 53 snaps. Jack Jones finished with 30 snaps. Right. Um, You know, J.C. finished the game with only one combined tackle. Jack Jones finished the game with three total tackles. So their engagement level, obviously, is going to be down as a result of any type of action that keeps them from the the field of battle, folks. Whether it be warranted, whether it be not, whether it be petty, or whether it be deserved, I, I think in a lot of ways it does a disservice to this team. So I'm in full agreement with you, Murph. I don't believe that now is the type of time or a game setting is the type of time for this type of action, especially when you know that two guys that can make plays on defense against, again, a wide receiver core that can definitely make plays and they're capable of, of big things. We saw that on yep. Sunday. Uh, you need as many bodies out there as possible that can make plays, and these two are two of your better playmakers on the defensive side of the ball. So, yeah, clearly a head scratcher for the New England Patriots and for Bill Belichick. Yep. Um, unfortunately, this is not new territory for New England. No, 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 no. You you can go all the way back to the Super Bowl against the the Eagles and um, and Butler being being sat down, and it's it's you you just scratch your head and you wonder, and you mm-hmm. until somebody writes the book, you're never really going to know. Yeah, you're exactly. never really going to know. And again, that one was explained away as performance issues, recent performance yep. issues in practice, not up to the challenge. I know a lot of you were rolling and your eyes. I'm telling you, it wasn't. It that. wasn't. I told you um, then it wasn't. I yeah. told you exa- all exactly what happened there. Yeah. All right. You you don't question the coach's son. You don't put nepotism out here. You don't say that you're here because you're so and so's offspring. Mm. All right. And and that. I, I'll go to my grave believing mm. my source that that told me that was the reason. Yeah. And folks, regardless of the reason, it definitely did a disservice to the Patriots in that yep. Super Bowl. And to a much lesser degree, it did do a disservice to the New England Patriots on the field on Sunday. Uh, Murph, before we take our leave of this subject, um, these types of moves can have a detrimental effect on a locker room whether intentional or unintentional. Uh, Players form bonds with each other, and they tend to rally around one another when there are certain matters of this type. They didn't expect it from the coaches, but the players were not exactly in a divulgatory mood after the game either. Um, I thought Adrian Phillips had an interesting comment after this game. known Adrian for a good long while. I know him back to the days where I covered him as a member of the Los Angeles Chargers. Not necessarily the most vocal in the world, but he'll tell you the way it is. He says, I can't get into that. But if you want to know what that is, you're going to have to talk to them. They ended up playing. It is what it is. It almost leads you to believe that Maybe this wasn't such a mystery to the players after all, no. but they may be keyed in to what was the what was the cause here and why that was the case. A simple, I have no idea. We expected them to be out there. Going to have to ask coach yep. about that. That's beyond me. Would have probably diffused this a little bit more. And I can tell you, having covered Adrian in the past, this is not a guy that just wants to stir the pot just for the right. sake of stirring the pot. He's going to tell you, and he'll tell you something, and I think he showed restraint in holding back, but it does lead you to believe that something is under the surface. Can this have a detrimental effect on the Patriots moving forward? Because it's already uh, a fragile situation in New England as it is. It, it really is. It's a powder keg. It, it really is a powder keg. And um, I have never seen uh, um, people come to the podium or have, have uh, microphones put in their face in the locker room and and come back with with stuff like this over the over, honestly over the past two seasons and um bill has an affinity for guys who are on his side 
and who who uh, part of the Patriot way is ignore the noise and don't create any noise. Mm. But um, like you said, Adrian Phillips, is, it, it, it does. It looks to me like this is something that was ongoing during the week that they mm. knew was going to happen. And uh, and I'm sure a lot of the guys were not happy about it when they look up and they see that they're at two at two and seven. Mm-hmm. Um, when these these players they feel in their hearts could have been out there and and helping them win a football game. Yeah, without question. And again, the words I can't get into that spoken by Adrian Phillips, and yep. once again reiterated by Mike Pellegrino when we spoke to him on Tuesday morning. So, folks, take that for what you will. We'll see if it has any residual effect. But the New England Patriots have always been very good at shrugging these types of issues off, moving on and moving on. Really, kind of, I don't want to say unscathed, but moving on without a hitch. They yeah. put the the needs of the team above their own. With the Patriots now at two and seven, and in a position they haven't been since two thousand. That's it. We're on to Frankfurt. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see if on to Frankfurt is still the philosophy in that locker room, or if these players are a little different in harboring some of that ill will uh, moving forward. Uh, I guess we'll find out on Sunday, and very early on Sunday morning will we find that out, Murph. But. Jack Jones and J.C. Jackson were not the only Patriots that were absent from the field on Sunday, folks. One was absent before the game even started, and we knew he was going to be out. Of course, most of us, myself included, expected him to be on the field on Sunday. We're talking rookie wide receiver Kayshawn Butte, who continues to remain in the Belichickian version of double secret probation. I've used the Dean Wormer quote several times now. I think it's time to turn the page and not treat this like a joke. Murph and I are going to discuss exactly why Keishon Butte was not on the field and what it may mean for the Patriots pass catchers moving forward. All that and more when this episode of the Locked On Patriots podcast continues, a proud part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Locked On listeners, we've all been there. You want tickets to the big game or your favorite musical artist, and you just can't seem to find an easy and affordable way to do it. Well, you shouldn't have to worry when you're buying tickets to your next big event. Game time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all of the sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you. And game time's all in prices show your total up front so you know you're getting a great deal without all those hidden fees. They're actually obsessed with finding ways to help you save money on tickets. That includes their zone deals, where you pick the section and game time picks the seats for an average of an 18% savings. And the game time guarantee means you'll always get the best price. If you find the tickets in the same section and roll for less, game time will credit you 110% of the difference. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time. Download the game time app, create an account, and use the code LOCKEDONNFL for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. So again, create an account, redeem the code LOCKEDONNFL, that's L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N-N-F-L, for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Patriots fans, thank you once again for making Locked On Patriots a daily part of your New England Patriots coverage. And of course, don't forget to subscribe, download, follow Locked On Patriots wherever you get your podcasts to ensure that you get the latest episode as soon as it's available. Today, the legendary Connor Murphy Fisto himself. Thomas Murphy of E2GSports.com drops by, and we're talking all things New England Patriots. Where are they? Sort of feels like a Carmen Sandiego episode, yeah. Murphy. It kind there of feels go. like a Where's Waldo. <laughs> we're rolling them all into one. Everybody's out there searching. Um, bottom line, folks, we talked a lot about J.C. Jackson, Jack Jones, and their conspicuous absences from the field for the first part of Sunday's loss to the Washington Commanders, but someone who is even more conspicuous by his absence, who showed up on the inactives list, yep, and someone who we all thought we were going to see on Sunday, wide receiver, rookie wide receiver, Kayshawn Butte. Mm-hmm. Now, Murph, Kayshawn has not taken a regular season snap since the team's week one loss to the Philadelphia Eagles. We all know how that game ended. Kayshawn unable to get his second foot down, Unfortunately, yeah, that could have been a big play that could have led to something for the New England Patriots. But you have to think that with the Patriots' core of receivers just riddled with injury right now, 
Mm -hmm. you would have thought that someone yep. with the ability to go up and make contested catches yep. and has the ability to be an explosive playmaker in the open field would have been an asset to Mac Jones on Sunday. Alas, it didn't work. Eight weeks now in a row, we have not seen him on the right. field. Before we get into the ins and outs, the ups and downs of why that is, what's your take on this matter? How surprised were you to see Kayshawn Booty's name on the list of inactives when this game began on Sunday? I was shocked mm -hmm. after the week of practice that he had, after the praise that you heard from the coaches, after the the um, the back padding that, that you got from Bill Belichick, that this is the best week of practice that he's mm -hmm. had in months, you know, maybe since he's been here. And then to not see him on Sunday, I was I was I was flabbergasted. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so much of so many of us were because it almost seemed like they were setting the table for him to play. Um, specifically being asked about his week of practice and saying it's the best week of practice that he had, yep. reiterating that if you go out, you catch the ball, you do things that you need to have done, you're going to get out there and play. We'll talk about the assistant coaches and their uh, meetings with the media on Tuesday morning. Troy Brown said that several times. Yep. All I ask is you go out there, you catch the ball. If you do that and run your routes correctly, you're going to play. So that leads that would lead one to believe that the Patriots are seeing something in practice that us mere mortals are not seeing. If that's the case, why pump somebody's tires and say you had the best practice you had if they're still not doing the things you need to have done in order to be able to see the field? Because Kayshawn was brimming with a lot of confidence when we talked to yep. him last week. And it sure seemed was. really, yeah, and it, it seemed very much like a not only a possibility but a probability that he was suiting up he talked about stepping up he talked about now his name's being called those types of you know those types of quotes are not just pulled from thin air these guys right. are savvy folks in what they say to the press and yeah just really surprised me it really really shocked me that he wasn't on the field yeah it, it really did and it it might come down to the fact that uh the last time a, a microphone was stuck in his face he was talking about how much he was looking forward to being back on the field. Mm -hmm. um, if, for those of you that don't know, I coach, you know, I, I coach uh, um, high school age kids, not in football. I coach baseball. And uh, but one of the, th the big things that I get on on my guys about is when they make decisions for themselves, when they say things that are uh, out of the box. And, and what I come up to them and say is who coaches this team? Do you coach this team or do I coach this team? I decide who plays and who sits. All right, that's it. And and one of the things that that just rang in my head was that last uh, set of interviews, that last time that he was in front of reporters, and he said that. I think it was Thursday or Friday, mm -hmm. and uh, then he's a healthy scratch on Sunday. Mm -hmm. uh, he was part of my keys during the week. Um, as excuse me, as we, uh, as Mike said earlier, that Troy Brown had said, if you can get open and you can catch a ball, then you are um, going to play. Phil Perry, our good friend, tweeted mm -hmm. that out this morning. And, and I asked Phil, I said, well, you know, does, does keeping two feet in bounds count too? Because mm -hmm. that's the only reason that, that I can understand, um, you know, does, does uh, he, he said something about, um, uh, I said, I'd be happy right now if we had somebody out there that could catch a ball when it touches their hands, when it falls into their hands. Mm -hmm. Because twice over the past two weeks, uh, Mac Jones has dropped dimes on long passes yeah. and uh, come up empty on them, come up yeah. completely empty, game-changing plays. Mm -hmm. um, and you can say yesterday, uh, Jalen Rager. Rager. Jalen mm -hmm. Rager. Yeah, Rager yeah. dropped that ball. And um, you could say that – that was a um, that was a play that that you would have thought that Keishawn Butte would have made. Mm -hmm. um, you could you could say that you know that that's a, that's a play where you wanted to know why Tyquan Thornton was not running that route. Okay, right. and he didn't run that route all day. They had Tyquan Thornton running outs and slants, and you know, uh, and instead of posts or skinny posts or go routes, you know that that play to his. Um, his strengths. Yeah. No, we're throwing a Jalen Ragor and, and balls are coming out of his hand. Keishon Butte makes that, makes that play. Mm. He does. Yeah. From what I've seen of him in college, from what I saw of him early in, in training camp, and from what I've been told that happens uh, at practice, 
he makes that play and he made that play last week in practice, but he didn't have a chance to do it on Sunday. And, and I want more than, uh, more of an explanation than I'm getting out of, out of, uh, the coaching staff right now for it. Yeah. No, that's a good point. It, it takes a lot. It takes a lot for me yeah. to get this upset with the coaching staff, especially when it comes to um, reporters complaining about why they're not getting the answers that that they feel that they need. Because a lot of the times it's not answers that that fans are looking for. But this is an answer that fans are looking for. Mm-hmm. Okay, you, when you are this banged up at the wide receiver position, when you are yeah. this hurting for playmakers, why is this kid not being given a chance? I understand he's a, a sixth round pick. Was he the sixth or was he? Yeah. yeah. No, he's sixth sixth round pick. Round pick. Yeah. I understand, but it, it doesn't matter. It's never mattered to me where you were chosen. Yeah. Okay. I, I've never held it against somebody if they were, they were chosen in the first round and I'm never going to hold it against somebody if they were chosen in the sixth round. That's for damn sure. Mm-hmm. If they show up and they ball out and this kid balls out, why yeah. isn't he on the freaking field? Well, I don't think that uh, it's his dress status that's keeping him from the field. I don't think the Patriots are looking at this and saying, he's a sixth round pick. You know, we'll see what we got. We'll no. roll the dice. Yeah. We'll take our chances. No, Folks, if you want to know why Keishon Butte is on this roster or why he was drafted, in the NFL, take a look at the film of him as a freshman at LSU and the mm-hmm. first part of his sophomore season before he suffered a devastating injury that kept him right. out for the remainder of the season. That freshman season, 735 yards on 45 catches, five touchdowns. He compiled all of that in 10 games. Through the first five games of his sophomore season, Murph, he was well on his way to yep. eclipsing those totals. He already had in five games, 38 receptions. 509 yards and nine touchdowns. Imagine if you double those numbers or at least project that type of production coming out of him for the remaining five games on the season. Boudet would have been a first round talent. He might have even been top 10, top 15 type talent, folks, coming out of his maybe his sophomore year. You might not have even seen him go back for his junior season if he's making that type of leap and he's really capable of doing it. So I don't think anyone is wondering whether or not his talent is there. We've seen it. It's visible. He was supposed it's... to be the next big thing out of LSU. Exactly. After and to do that, year. Yeah, and to do that at LSU, folks, not the easiest school in the world to stand out in. Take a look at some of the standout wideouts that, these, right. that this program has produced. Um, it's not an easy place to stand out above the rest, but Keishon Bude was well on his way to doing that. That injury clearly set him back. But... There's also something to be said about the attitude and the performance that just seemed to be, again, I'll use a term that I used yesterday, and I hate using it, but can't think of a better word right now, folks, deflated. It almost seemed like it took the wind out of his sails. That same swagger that you saw in Keishon Boudet was no longer there. Do you think it's possible that those types of issues that plagued him in LSU in the latter part of his career there are starting to creep back in. Is that what the Patriots coaching yeah. staff is seeing? Because it just doesn't make any sense to me otherwise. I, I, I really don't. I, I don't think that that's crept in. And I'm not saying that that can't happen with a ball player. You you see it. You 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 grip a bat a bit tighter. Um, you, you try to anticipate a pitch or you uh, try to anticipate a hit down the line. And mm-hmm. it, you just, you, you're, you're thinking to yourself, it's almost like, don't throw me the ball. Mm. Okay, because you're a little worried that you're going to screw up. But I don't yeah. see that out of Keishon Butte. I see That's somebody that makes plays and he wants to go out there and he wants the ball thrown to him. He's not going to be the uh, the guy that says, just throw me the damn ball. Um, but but he's somebody that wants it on every single play and works his ass off to get open. And like Troy Brown said, you know, if you can get open and you can catch the pass. Well, he gets open and he catches the passes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He does. He absolutely does. And look, if the Patriots are going to deploy him at some point, and you have to hope for Boudet's sake, for the Patriots' sake, that they're going to give this kid a chance to showcase what he can do. He's well-sized, six feet, 195, so he's not going to have problems going up and battling some of these bigger defensive backs to make contested catches. He's very good at doing that. He's tough to bring down after the catch because he's got some size and he's got some bulk on him that allows him to win those battles. But I think he's one of your better explosive big play threats. And right now, the Patriots desperately need a big play threat. Whether a guy is going to make rookie mistakes or not, you need someone that's going to spark this offense. And I think Kayshawn Booty can do it. 
He's got the ability to adjust his body. He can make the contested catches. He can change direction. He's got yep. the speed to be able to do it. And there's no question about it. The Patriots brass saw something in him to right. bring him in and not pass on him the way so many other teams had done. I think they looked at him in the sixth round and said, yeah, this is great value. We've got to bring yeah. this kid in. I mean, But at some point, he's got to see the field. When you were talking about a kid that went coming out of his freshman year was talked about with the likes of Odell Beckham Jr., Dwayne mm. Bowe, Justin Jefferson, he this mm. kid was supposed to be the next thing. And for whatever reason, um, be it, you know, uh, injury or or just not getting in, the Patriots decided to take what, what everybody calls a flyer on him in the sixth round. Mm. Well, that kid grabbed that flyer and ran to the end zone. Mm. He he brought it during you, you folks. If you didn't, if you weren't uh, able to see it, uh, you you should have been able to read about it. Everybody loved what he was doing on the field. And after game one, when he was asked to run routes that he doesn't normally run and didn't get two feet down, um, it was a it was an issue. And I'm afraid that uh, it, it could be an issue with other ball players on this team right now and going forward that, that, you know, guys like Tyquan Thornton who are being jumped on for, you know, having choppy steps again and, and not getting into his break quite as quickly. They, they, the, the kid doesn't do that. They don't even ask him to do that in, in practice. It's true. Okay. Go out there and run a skinny post, take the top off and give some room to people mm -hmm. underneath. That's what he's asked to do. So yeah, yeah, it was it was a terrible route, and and we all got on him for for that at the moment. But you know, I hope this doesn't snowball into I I need to make a uh, an example out of everybody, and it just yeah. seems like this kid is is wrongfully being made an example of. Um, and then again, I could be talking out of hat. Mm. You know, it, 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 there could be something going on behind the scenes that I'm not seeing. I'm just going on what I've seen and what I've heard and and what I've heard come out of his mouth yeah. as to the only reasons that I can see him not being on the field. Yeah, without any question, folks, uh, I think you make a great point. And again, we don't know what the coaches know. We don't work, especially all of us in the media. We have limited access to what the players are seeing, what the coaches are seeing on the field during practice so if there are underlying circumstances or things that are going on in the locker room behind closed doors we're not privy to that so we can't speak to that all we can do is speak to what we see and i agree with you wholeheartedly on booty we need to get a sample size of what this kid can do on a football field and time's running out for the new england patriots to be able to do that you hope that they're going to do it sooner rather than later especially with this week 10 matchup coming up with the indianapolis colts and Murph, it's going to be fun watching this team play in Germany over the weekend. Um, hasn't been necessarily fun to watch this team play a whole lot this season, but it's yeah. exciting to watch these international games, and we're definitely looking forward to it. But before I let you go today, my friend, we're going to discuss which player on this roster has caught Murph's sharp eye as one that needs to step it up the most if the Patriots want to come back from Europe with a win in their pocket. We're going to talk about that player and more in just a moment when this episode of the Locked On Patriots podcast wraps up right here on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Locked On listeners, when it comes to game day, the only thing just as important as cheering on your favorite team is making sure that your game day table is well stocked. Why root for your team on an empty stomach? Order on DoorDash and save on all of your favorite football watch party favorites. All of your favorite restaurants and stores from retail to grocery, guess what, folks? They're on the app, so you can shop everything you need to get game day ready. You can even get prepared before game day. Stock up on your favorite appetizers, order all of your tailgate gear right on DoorDash, and then get ready to watch your team win. After all, Patriots fans, nothing says game day like some wings, am I right? Well, now you can enjoy the hickory smoked wings in any of their 14 delicious sauce flavors from Bites at Patriots Place. That's right. It's just like a piece of Gillette Stadium delivered right to your door just in time for kickoff with DoorDash. So act now and you can get 50% off up to a $10 value when you spend $15 or more on your first order. That's when you download the DoorDash app and enter the code LOCKED23. So don't delay. Do it today. And don't forget to use the code LOCKED23, L-O-C-K-E-D-2-3, for 50% off up to a $10 value on your first order when you download the DoorDash app and spend $15 or more. Subject to change. Terms apply.
Patriots fans, thank you once again for making Locked On Patriots a daily part of your New England Patriots coverage. And of course, folks, don't forget that Crossover Thursday is coming up here on the Locked On Podcast Network. Across the streams, Indianapolis Colts, New England Patriots style for this international matchup in Frankfurt, Germany, coming up on Sunday. Going to be a blast, so definitely be sure to download, subscribe to, follow Locked On Patriots wherever you get your podcasts. Make sure that you don't miss that. And so much more coming up here on the week. So be sure to stay locked into Locked On Patriots. But the legendary Count of Murphy Fisto himself, Thomas Murphy, has graced our airwaves with not just one day of presence, but two. And we are absolutely in his debt for doing so. So, Don Murph, thank you very much for all of the wisdom and counsel that you lend here to Locked On Patriots. We do know that the New England Patriots need to step it up in order to get a win. Uh, this team has proven that they can hang with mostly any team in the league and make things interesting, but they've also proven that at any given time, they can drop a game to any team in this league. This is not yeah. a team that is guaranteed no. a win against anyone, folks. Four. Yeah. Four one-score losses. Absolutely. So in that vein, you cannot go into any part of this season now, any part of this schedule, and say, this is a softer one. This is one the Patriots should have. They don't have any more should-haves on this schedule anymore. So it's going to be a hard-fought game against the Indianapolis Colts this week. Murph, when the Patriots step off the plane in Frankfurt, when they step into Frankfurt Stadium, ready to take on the Colts at 9.30 a.m. Eastern time, who needs to step it up on this roster if the Patriots are even going to think about coming away from Germany with a win on Sunday? All right, let's 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 get this out of the way and out of the way quick and it's uh it's brian belichick it's steve belichick mm. okay um marty mapo is not a uh i mean kyle duggar is not a uh free safety people mm. stop stop doing it marty mapo is not a free safety all right stop doing it put these guys in a position to succeed and find somebody to get back there who knows what's going on all right it, one of the one of the key things that that I went into the draft was we all knew that um, that uh, uh, Devin McCourty was not going to be back, mm -hmm. and they nothing was addressed during this off season to find somebody to actually replace him. Mm -hmm. All right, so I am putting this on the defensive backs coaches and uh, to figure it out because they, too often there are guys that this is not second nature to. Uh, has been expected to be second nature to, and it's one of the big reasons that these big plays are happening. Mm. That's it. Sorry, mm. I, 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 you know, I was, I was gonna go in a different direction. I was gonna, I was gonna jump on Keon White for uh, playing just, you know, a little too uh, out of the box and a little too freelance and a little too um, not as disciplined as he should be, uh, because he's, he's for so long he has just gotten away with. Uh, with uh, his athleticism being able to overcome anything. And he had a good game, but he could have had a great game. And, mm. and, and but no, this is what I, I'm putting it on the coaches. I'm mm. putting on two coaches, not named Bill, but yes, named Belichick. <laughs> yeah, very good point. Very, very good point. And again, um, the Belichicks were asked about, at least Brian was on uh, Tuesday morning about the usage of Monte Mepo. And he told, um, he told reporters that, Look, you know, we drafted these guys, we bring them in, they're able to play multiple positions, we're trying them out. Yeah, I agree with you, Murph. This is yeah. not the time to be trying these guys mm -hmm. out. Marte Mappo is at his best when he's aligning at the linebacker position. He's right. not meant to be in the backfield right nope. now. Maybe in a year or two, with a little more seasoning, he might be. But this kid hits hard, he plays with the energy, and he plays with the skill set of That's a linebacker. It. That's where he needs to be. So I agree with you. I actually do think that. I told it's... people when this kid was drafted to put on film of him, close your eyes and listen to him play football. You can't listen mm -hmm. to him play football right now. Mm -hmm. yep. You can't yep. because you've taken away everything that makes him great. Yep. And, um, you know, I understand position versatility, but you, you can't expect this. Uh, you can't expect that out of a rookie. You, no, can't. you can't. Somebody that hasn't played that position. And there are guys on this this team that you could put back there. I think the toughest thing about this, Murph, is that 
Marte came in as such a smart football player, someone that had wisdom beyond his years. We kept hearing it all throughout training yep. camp. This kid's studying the playbook. He's working with the coaches. During the preseason games, he's on the sidelines. He's working with guys and getting them into, you know, it, it was a situation where because he came in with the shoulder injury that right. he was looking for ways to get involved. Right. And when he was given a clean bill of health, you, you saw him, him on the sidelines next to yeah. the defensive coaches during the preseason, Absolutely. and it was brilliant. You just loved everything. And you I did. still love everything about this kid. Yeah. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, without question. I think you're absolutely right. And that's essentially the point that I'm trying to make is that with the knowledge that he has of this system and knowing where he fits and where he doesn't, it just kind of boggles my mind that they're trying right. to force him into a position where I think he's somewhat suited to play, but better suited to play in another mm -hmm. location. So I agree with Look, you. Yes, it does have to be on the coaches to step up with this. You know, to, 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 um, uh, who am I, who am I quoting here? Um, to quote uh, Jack Nicholson in The Departed, it, it, it's good to be book smart and it's good mm -hmm. to be street smart. Okay, this kid is book smart right now. Mm -hmm. He's not street smart yet. That'll mm -hmm. come. All right, that's going to happen. Uh, but you have to give guys time to get to know the streets. Absolutely. You really do. You can, yeah. you can, you can read Edgar Allan Poe till, till the day you die. But until you live Edgar Allan Poe, that you really don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> mm, you're absolutely right. It really. I, and that really, I think, sums it up perfectly in terms of what the Patriots need to do with Marte. So hopefully we'll start to see the Marte Mapu that we expected to see right along, folks, when the Patriots drafted him and the smart, hard-hitting football player that can really be a dynamic force right. in this um, in this defense he was one of my favorite picks of the patriots coming yep. out of this draft and i still think he that's was expect big things from him but you need to bring him along and you see where he is i'm going to take a page out of your book murph when i say who needs to step it up and i'm going to say the coaching staff in terms of how they're going to be handling taekwon thornton this week um i think i I'm in full agreement with what you said earlier. We need to see more go routes. We need to see him more stretching the field. This is what Taekwon yep. does very well. Um, and we need to see him on the field more. The Patriots now have had this kid under their tutelage right. for a full year. I understand injuries have been um, a detrimental force to him. And Bill O'Brien brought that up on, right. on Tuesday as well. He said, you know, he hasn't played a lot of football because nope. of the injuries that he's had. But there have been moments on the field that shows what he can do. And then I, there are moments on the field that shows that he's been put in a what very he's not ready position for. to showcase his talent. The fourth and three, he was open folks that's yeah. on mac that needed to be completed yep. i don't know where mac was throwing but that could have been an opportunity and then taekwon has the speed to turn that into something big and he had some space in front of him so that needed throwing to his really arms be up in completed. the air yeah when Mac's exactly throwing yep. his arms up in the air come yeah. on junior i'm right here yeah let me do my thing exactly and uh and and no i, I as you know since i said it yeah, I agree with you wholeheartedly. They need to use him better. They need to use all of these guys better. And yep. and there, there's there's a way that you can do that without tipping your hand. I've said it before. Get this kid into motion. Get him into bunches, and get him off the off the line of scrimmage clean. Because we all know what what you know when when you're called a slim reaper. The the reason is because you're tiny, okay? Because you're svelte. And right. because you have a hard time getting off the field and, and bump and run coverage and man coverage and when somebody's up in your face and he does, he has to, yeah. but there are ways around that. Absolutely. There are ways around that. And, and quite frankly, Bill, I can go down to Foxborough High School and find a coach that can tell you how to do it. Mm, yeah. And there are, and the, <laughs> yeah, and you know, bottom line, folks, it is. It's a lot about what Taekwon brings to the table. I know a lot of people are using the B word to describe him right now in terms of bust. Uh, yep. Don't put him in the same don't. category as Kill Harry, folks. It's not. Mm -mm. The, it's not the situation. It's not the there have been a lot of injuries, and there also been poor usage of the way this kid is yep. being used. So I still think there's something there under the surface when it comes to Taekwon. Now it's time to let it out. Take the training wheels off of him. Right. And let's let's let him stretch the field a little That's bit it. and use him to his proper usage. And if that is the case, and Mac Jones does have a deep threat as a result of Tyquan Thornton being able to make plays, could be something special for the Pats. You know, there's something to be said for patting a guy on the ass and saying, you know, go get him on the next play, as yeah. opposed to sitting him down because he ran a bad route. Right. Exactly. All right. And yeah, build and your Bill kids up. Absolutely. And Bill O'Brien brought that up, and he said, "No, oh, just three downs after Mac Jones missed him." 
he ran the wrong route or he ran the routing correctly. And then all of a yeah. sudden you started to see Taekwon's um, targets being, you know, lessened. And all of a sudden he's relegated to, yep. you know, really, I think, remedial duty at that yep. point. And when you invested a second round pick on a, on a wide receiver, you definitely expect a lot more in return than what they're getting. Now, and granted, some of that. Right. Yeah, I, I, I've I've said it before with uh, with Doctor Strange, and you can say it with him. They were brought in here to be part of a different offensive system. That mm. doesn't mean that they can't be used in this system and used right. well. You know, we talk a lot about players and things that need to get done here, and we have our fun. Uh, today's show was really, I think, entirely about guys that are missing in action, either because mm-hmm. of coaches' reasons or because of you know improper play on the field, things of right. that nature. But we want to hear who you feel should see right. the field more. Do you agree with us that Jack Jones, J.C. Jackson, and Keishon Butte need to be given the chance to play? Do you believe that guys like Marte Mapu and Tyquan Thornton need to be better utilized by the coaching staff to their strengths? Or did we miss someone, one of your favorites, or a player that you believe has not played up to the challenge that mm-hmm. needs to start stepping it up? Let us know what you think in the comment section below. We love hearing from you. Interact with us because you everydayers out there, and as well as you casual listeners and first-timers, you're what makes Locked On Patriots possible, and we appreciate your support more than you can possibly imagine. But what can I say? Two days in a row, twice as nice. Gotta love it. You bring it every single time, and I can't thank you enough for taking the time out to join me here on Locked On Patriots. Once again, for the benefit of our listeners that are hearing your golden melodious tones for the first time, where can they reach out to you? What type of amazing content do you have in store for all of our listeners here on Locked On? Well, I got a, I got a nice yours? little got a nice little piece over there at e2gsports.com about the Gold Glovers uh, that that were just announced by Major League Baseball. I've got some more stuff coming out on as to how our new GM and Grand Poobah can fix this uh, this uh, um, this mess mess that is at, at, at Fenway right now. And, uh, and does it, anybody get at me at Twitter? Do you, do you ever remember, um, uh, uh, finalists for rookie of the year being announced? I, I don't, I really mm. don't. I'm t- yeah. tired of hearing about it. Just announced, <laughs> announced the winner. Okay. And then we can move on. And, uh, and there we go. There we go. Other than that, the keys will be out on Friday as they always are. And I'll be back here on Monday. God willing. Yeah. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, wave of the future, my friend, wave of the future when it comes to hearing, you know, finalist lists and whatnot. I'm with you. It's a new experience. But you know what? We embrace change. We embrace the the newness. And it's going to be a lot of fun. Here's the top three. Tell me who tell me who came in third in the rookie of the year voting in 1987 right now. Tell me (laughs) on that note, folks, if you can name that, please put your name down in the comment section Mm -hmm. below. We'd love to hear it. Um, Yeah, don't cheat. No Google, folks. You know, off the top of your head. But uh, bottom line, Murph, thank you so much for everything that you do here for Locked On Patriots. We love you, and we can't wait to have you back. And, folks, what can we say? Thank all of you for taking time out of your schedule to join us here on Locked On Patriots each and every day. We are your team every day, but we wouldn't be if you didn't keep coming back each and every day. So a tip of the cap and a thank you to all of you everydayers out there, especially. On behalf of my good friend, that count of Murphy Fisto himself, the legendary Thomas Murphy, I'm Mike DeBate reminding you to stay safe and to stay well and to be the change you wish to see in the world. Have a great day, everyone, and we'll see you back here again tomorrow on Locked on Patriots.